Hey there! Have you ever wondered about the rise and fall of one of the most iconic racing game franchises in the gaming world? Well today, we're diving into the thrilling journey of the Midnight Club franchise. But first let me ask you this, have you ever experienced the rust of street racing in the neon lit cities of the Midnight Club series? If you have, you'll know why the franchise holds such a special place in the hearts of many gamers. But how did it all begin, and what led to its eventual fall from grace? Let's explore the Midnight Club universe from its inception to its unfortunate demise. Midnight Club was all about underground street racing, where your skills behind the wheel were your only ticket to fame and glory. The franchise was born from the minds of Rockstar San Diego, the same studio responsible for the Red Dead Redemption series. You'll see Midnight Club wasn't just about racing, it was a lifestyle, a way to experience the thrill of illegal street racing without ever leaving your gaming console. The gameplay was unlike anything else at the time. It offered an open world experience where players could explore dynamic sprawling cities like New York and Tokyo long before the open world games were the norm. These cities were beautifully recreated with a vibrant neon soaked atmosphere that made you feel like you were part of a real street racing scene. The success of the first game led to the sequel in 2003, Midnight Club 2. This time the game expanded its roster of cities to include Los Angeles, Paris and Tokyo. Further immersing the players in the thrill of underground street racing, gamers fell in love with the exhilarating gameplay where every corner could be a shortcut or a trap and every car could be a potential rival. Midnight Club 2 became a favourite among fans and a beacon of innovation in the racing game genre. Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition was a pivotal moment in the franchise's history. It not only had an engaging plot, but introduced us to a variety of new cities, each with its own unique vibe. You could race through Detroit's gritty streets, explore the glamour of San Diego, and conquer the neon maze of Tokyo if you got the remix version, and not to mention Atlanta. The car list was extensive, allowing you to modify and customise your ride to your heart's content. This was the first game to have licensed cars instead of the generic ones. The gameplay was slick and challenging, demanding precision, skill and a solid understanding of your chosen car's capabilities. This game marked the pinnacle of Midnight Club's success and was a fan favourite among racing game fans. Then came Midnight Club LA, a game that dared to break the franchise's tradition by focusing on a single city. This decision was controversial, but it resulted in a larger, more detailed map compared to the previous games. The cities of Angels came to life in ways players had never seen before and the sense of immersion was unparalleled. However, despite the potential, the game suffered from a lack of marketing. It was a hidden gem, often overlooked, even though it received excellent reviews. Rockstar had other successful titles to nature, and Minna Club Los Angeles sadly fell by the wayside. What happened behind the scenes at Rockstar? Well, the company needed all hands on deck for their immersively successful titles, most notably Grand Theft Auto V. This distraction meant that other Rockstar developers were stretched thin, including the Midnight Club team. The resources and attention were pulled away, resulting in less investment in the Midnight Club franchise. GTA V has definitely had some inspiration from Midnight Club though. It has the similar checkpoint races, customization, and a tuner's expansion which was released two years ago. So in spite Midnight Club not really being around, the Midnight Club spirit is within GTA V. As if that weren't enough, rumours swirled about crippling crunch times and a toxic work environment within Rockstar. Their conditions became unbearable for many developers, impacting their motivation and creativity, and resulting in quite a lot of the original Midnight Club team straight up leaving. Now you might be wondering, with all this success and innovation, what went wrong? How did the Midnight Club franchise start to lose its grip on the racing game market? Well, the franchise's downfall can be attributed to a combination of factors. One significant factor was the ever-evolving gaming industry. By the late 2000s and early 2010s, the market was changing rapidly. Open world racing games were no longer as novel, and other franchises such as Forza and Need for Speed were rising to prominence. The Midnight Club series began to feel outdated compared to its new competitors. Eventually though, Midnight Club faded into obscurity. Take-Two Interactive, Rockstar's parent company, still owns the license, but the franchise hasn't seen the light of day since. An eerie silence surrounds its feature. While a web license was acquired in 2015, it hasn't led to any concrete developments. More or less meaning that this franchise is now as good as dead. And that is the rise and fall of the Midnight Club franchise. It started with a bang, revolutionising the open world racing genre, but ultimately succumbed 
to the ever-evolving gaming industry and the shifting priorities of its parent company Rockstar Games. So what do you think? Did you like Midnight Club? Have you played them all? Have you not played any of them? Are you currently looking online to see if you can emulate one onto your PC? <laughs> because I'm not. Anyway, that being said, what was your favourite Midnight Club memory? I'd love to know down in the comments below. I'm going to be controversial and say that LA was my favourite one. I know that seemed to have disappointed some people, but even though it wasn't the most Midnight Club-y game, I still really enjoyed it and I still have fond memories of that game. Anyway, with that being said, please remember to like, share and subscribe. And until next time, I hope to see you all.